Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's gonna to be a video that a lot of people requested after I did my 2012 MacBook Pro running Monterey video. A lot of you asked me to do a tutorial on how I got it running, so that's what this video is all about. Now, as you watch this video, if you find the content useful, please remember to subscribe. That's the best way to let me know that you appreciate the content that I'm doing, because this content takes a long time to make, especially something like this where there's a lot of downtime with downloading the software and stuff like that. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. I'm gonna jump on and show you how to do this step by step. All right, so here we are on the MacBook Pro desktop, and the first thing we're gonna to need to do is insert a 16 gigabyte or larger thumb drive. So we'll put that in. Give it a second. Now, if you get this message that it needs to be initialized, just go ahead and hit initialize and then go into disk utility. And um, you can just erase it from here. If it has master boot record, that's fine. All you need to do is just erase it. And then now we should be fine because during this process, we're gonna reformat that anyway. So it just needs to be recognizable by your Mac. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is go to the Open Core Legacy Boot Patcher site. I already have it in here uh, just to save some time, but I'll put a link down in the description with the URL. Once we're here, we're just gonna hit get started. And all we're gonna be doing is following through this guide. Now you can skip this first section here or go back and read it at your own time if you'd like. But we're just gonna go down to this download and build Mac OS installers. And we're gonna grab the Open Core Legacy Patcher release. This is just gonna take us to a GitHub page. This is all perfectly safe. We're gonna scroll down just a little bit and download the Open Core Patcher GUI .app .zip. So download that, it's only 42 megs, it should download relatively quickly. Once it's downloaded, it should automatically unzip that file. If it doesn't, you'll need to uh, extract that zip archive. But assuming it uh, extracted by itself, we're just gonna go and launch that open core patcher. Uh, this is just saying that it, it doesn't know what this application is, just hit open to give it the okay to run it. Now, what we wanna do here is we are going to build an installer from that USB drive that we put in. So let me just minimize this to get it out of the way and we're just gonna click Create Mac OS Installer. We're gonna download the Mac OS Installer unless you already have it downloaded. And when we click on this, it's gonna give us the option of what we want to, uh, what version we want to install. Right now it's going and getting the catalog and then it should pop up here and ask us which version we want. So let's give it a second. Okay, got that catalog and it's showing us all the versions that are available. So this patcher supports uh, Big Sur and up. So we can see that we have the latest versions of Mac OS. We even have the Mac OS 12.3 beta. So for this video, um, we're gonna just go select the non-beta. Uh, you can choose the beta if you want. I recommend you only select the actual releases. So we're gonna do that. And it's gonna download it. Now this is gonna take a little while because this is the installer for Mac OS. Uh, so I'm gonna let this run and then I'll come back when it's all done. Okay, so it just finished downloading and it's prompting me for my password. So let me put that in. And now we are all finished and we can click on the flash installer button. We're gonna select the installer that we wanna use. We only have one because it's the only one we downloaded. So we're gonna select that. And then we'll select our uh, SD card that we formatted previously. Uh, that's the only one we have in our system. So we're gonna go ahead and select that one. And then it's gonna go and um, prompt us for our password, obviously, and then go and format the drive and flash the installer to it. And then we can continue on to the next step. But this is gonna take a little while. So once again, I'm gonna stop the video now and then uh, come back when this is all completed. All right, so this is all done installing, so we can click OK on this success message here. Return to the main menu, and now we can build OpenCore and install it to this USB drive. Uh, now that we have the macOS installer on here, we had have to add the OpenCore files to get us to be able to boot the legacy Mac off of this. So hit the build and install OpenCore and then click build open core. It's gonna go through its thing here 
And then now we can install OpenCore. Now it should show you the USB drive that you uh, we created in the previous steps. If it doesn't, just pop the drive out, pop it back in, and then it should show up in here. So we're gonna go ahead and select our Cruiser Glide. Select the EFI partition. And then we have to put in our password again. And then we're just gonna let it do its thing. Again, this is gonna take a, a few more minutes. Okay, so I guess it only took a few seconds. So we're gonna return back to the main menu. And at this point, we can boot off of this USB drive to continue on for the rest of this tutorial. So I'm gonna shut this Mac down and then boot up holding down the option key and continue on from there. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna open up the USB drive and then we're gonna copy the open core patcher to that drive just so we have it because there's gonna be some post installation stuff that we wanna do. And if we have this on the USB drive, it's gonna make that easier. So after this is done copying, then I'll shut down and restart holding down the option key. All right, so unfortunately the way I'm capturing the MacBook screen, it doesn't let me do that from boot. So I apologize that I had to go over to a camera shot, but you should be able to see it. Um, all we need to do from here is we have these three options. We're gonna pick the EFI boot, and then we're gonna select install uh, Monterey. So this is just gonna boot up and go through the Mac OS installer. And this is gonna be like, just, just like installing any other uh, version of Mac OS. We're gonna install it on the MacBook and then go through the post installation steps to get things like the Wi-Fi card and the video card working well. All right, so here we are at the setup. So the first thing we wanna do is just go down and we're gonna wipe out our drive. So select disk utility, select Mac OS, or yours might say Macintosh hard drive or something along those lines. Just hit erase. And then uh, we can just hit erase again. It's gonna go through, erase that drive, and then we'll be ready to go on to the next part. Okay, so we're all done here. Hit done, and then we can close this window and then click on install Mac OS Monterey. Hit continue, continue again. Just hit agree here. And then we're gonna select our Mac OS or Macintosh hard drive, whatever hard drive your, is your internal drive on your Mac and hit continue. So again, this is gonna take quite a while, so I'm gonna stop the video and come back. When we come back, once again, we're gonna boot from the USB. So we're gonna boot holding down the option key, and this time we're gonna boot into the version of Mac OS that's installed on the hard drive. So I'll show you how to do that. And then when we get into Mac OS, we'll set it up so you don't need the USB anymore and we'll get the graphics working. Okay, the installation is all done. It brings us to this screen. We wanna make sure we select the install that shows the pictures of the hard drive because we're gonna be going through the rest of the configuration for Mac OS Monterey. All right, so the last part of that installation is done and it brings us to the Mac OS setup. So we're just gonna go through the setup and when we get to the desktop, I'll come back and do the post install steps. Okay, so here we are back on the Mac desktop and I apologize, I still have to use the camera. The external capture is not working. I think it's because the HD 4000 video card is not officially supported in Monterey. So maybe after we do these patching, uh, we'll get this to work, so we'll find out. So what we wanna do is access that Intel Mac OS Monterey um, drive that we created, that's the flash drive. And we're just gonna copy out the open core patcher. If you didn't do that step, if you didn't copy it over to the USB, you just need to go out to the internet and download it again, um, just like we did in the first step. So we're gonna go and open this up. Now, right now we have to boot the system from the USB drive. So let's fix that for the first, the first thing. So first we're gonna build and install open core. We're gonna click that again and we're gonna build it. So now that it's built, we're gonna install it, but this time we're gonna install it to our internal drive. So we don't wanna pick the, the uh, external 16 gig drive. We wanna click our internal drive, and then we're just gonna click our EFI. And we have to put in our password. 
and we're all done. We can return to the main menu. Now, before we do anything else, I'm gonna shut the system down and then start it up without the USB just to show you that we can boot. And you can see it took a while, but it did give us the Mac OS uh, icon that we can then click to launch into Mac OS. And here we are at the login screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. And now that we're getting to our desktop, we can go ahead and continue on with the post install patching. All right, once again, we're gonna open up Open Core Patcher. And then this time, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do the post install root patch. Now it detects what uh, is not compatible and it's gonna patch it. So uh, right here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it says graphics Intel Ivy Bridge. It knows that that's not compatible, but it's gonna patch it so that we can still use Monterey with it. So we're gonna start the boot patch, hit yes. Now that restarted the console as root, so we're gonna go ahead and do the post install root patch again. Start root patching. And now it's actually doing the patching. So again, that first time it just relaunched it as root and now it's actually doing the patching. As soon as this is done, we will restart and uh, see if this display capture uh, works. But after that, we're gonna be all done with the setup for this MacBook Pro on Monterey. Okay, so now it's all done. At the bottom it says, please reboot the machine for the patches to take effect. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna reboot it, and then uh, hopefully when we come back, we'll have screen capture again. All right, so we're back up, and as you can see, we do indeed have the external display, which I'm using to capture. So we're gonna go ahead and log in now. And there we go, we have Monterey installed. As we can see, if we go up to about this Mac, Mac OS Monterey 12.2.1. You'll be able to upgrade this when updates come available. You can just upgrade them. But pretty much every thing works just fine. Sound, video, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, all that stuff works great. Monterey performs very, very well on this machine. Now, honestly, you will get a little bit better performance on older versions. So if you use Catalina that's officially supported on this MacBook Pro, you'll get a little bit better performance. But if you need some of that newer software or newer function functionality that's in Monterey, um, this is how you upgrade the unsupported 2012 MacBook Pro to Monterey. All right, so there you have it. It's relatively easy, but it is time consuming to do this. You have to wait for the software to download. You have to wait for it to write to the USB. You have to wait for it to install to the hard drive, do the setup, all that kind of stuff. So it's easy, but it does take a long time to get this up and going. Again, if you found this useful, please make sure you subscribe. That lets me know that you like what I'm doing and encourages me to put up more. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.